Well, procrastinators, this week Steam announced a portable PC that looks like a Game Gear ate another bigger Game Gear. It's called the Steam Deck, and it sits comfortably in between the PS4 and PS5 in terms of power. Well, I say comfortably. It weighs 670 grams, which is two quarter pounders and a couple of pickles, more than a Switch with its controllers attached. But come on, who doesn't want to play their entire Steam library on the go for two to eight hours, two being the heavy stuff like Control and eight being indies like FTL and... Wait... Portable FTL? Portable Left for Dead 2? Portable Factorio? All that for just £350 for the base version, or £460 for the one with mediocre storage, or £570 for the better storage. Sign me the fuck up? They've already said you can wipe the Linux-based SteamOS and install Windows on it, which means it has the potential to be a portable Epic Games you play or whatever EA call their fucking thing nowadays machine. Or... Even better, it has the potential to be a portable good old games machine. Wait, is this a portable PS2 emulation machine? Holy shit, Stealth Vita! It's a Stealth Vita! Portable Shadow the Colossus! I knew this day would come! Ah! <laughs> anyway, look, I'm a fan of handheld games consoles. I love the ability to play games in bed because my dumb body is broken. Sure, I have no idea if I can even lift the Steam Deck during a bad CFS time, but fuck it, I'm in. I mean, not for the base version, of course, holy shit. Don't buy that unless you only want to play indies, but for the middle of the big boy. And it'll contrast nicely with the play date, which is also launching pre-orders in the next few weeks. Ah oh, man, handhelds are like buses. You wait ages for one, and then Steam release one that's the exact size, shape and weight of a bus. Great news! The Dacia Sandera, I mean the Stadia, has fucked up again. They've shifted their platform model so that studios are now paid based on how long players play for. Outer Wilds? Piece of shit. Oberdin? Fuck you. Literally any brilliant short indie game? Bah! Stadia wants to fill itself with Square Enix's Marvels is the Avengers, Destinies and all those other bunch of piece of shit games. Oh no! Anyway, Nickelodeon have revealed a new Smash Bros style fighter in Nickelodeon's All-Stars Brawl, featuring a whole bunch of characters that I don't know who the fuck they are, a few from shows like Spongebob, which I've never watched, and motherfucking Reptar, representing the Rugrats, of course, because probably they don't want to make a game where you beat the shit out of babies. Cowards! Anyway, here's some folk they need to add to make this old bastard pick it up. First, Patty Mayonnaise. Yeah, she's a small child, but she sounds like she smoked about 800 cigarettes a day. She'll be up for a fight. Two, Alan Strange, an alien child stranded on Earth who has to learn about how the world works. Alien powers and shit. Also, now he'd be like 37 and could easily kick a baby into mulch. Three, Chris Potter, owns a grocery store, lives with his mother, frequently has his orange soda nicked. Man's a powder keg. I wouldn't want to be there when he blows. Now, let's begin the transfusion as Bloodborne is coming to PS1. Wait, what? Well, some brilliant mad bastard is making a PS1 Bloodborne D make. This week, showing off gameplay from the Father Gascoigne fight. It looks in fucking credible from the wobbly textures to the massive subtitles. The sheer detail put into this thing is incredible. And soon, it'll be playable with a free release planned of the first few bosses. And yes, I'm counting this as Bloodborne on PC. Right, pens out because you need to mark down the date. On the 20th of July, Mini Motorways releases on Steam. This is the sequel to the only mobile game worth playing, Mini Metro, and it's better. It's genuinely better. It's been an Apple subscription exclusive for a few years, that's why you've not heard of it. But now, you got no excuse. Not that you want an excuse, because it's fucking superb. Go buy it. Or... Buy it when it comes out. As I'm now apparently just talking about shit that I love, have you been watching Taskmaster New Zealand? This might sound like blasphemy, but I think it's as good as the original. Similar direction, tight tasks, and weird Kiwi humour. It's an absolute delight. The Taskmaster, Jeremy Wells, looks like John Cena's dad and has this air of a headmaster who knows he's better than all of this. And his assistant, Paul Williams, looks and acts like the world's most uninterested waiter. If you could support this show locally, do. If not, you can find it knocking about on the YouTubes. 
I mean, it's not going to make you believe that a man can fly, but you will believe that a man can leap into a pond from a wheelbarrow, which you probably already could believe that. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Loki finished this week with a final episode that gave 90% of its runtime to a monologue from the incredible Jonathan Majors. I quite liked it, very Doctor Who in places, terrifyingly close to the Paradox Paradox in others, and I'm quite excited now to re-watch it, knowing that it doesn't torpedo a plot I've been working on for two and a half years. But anyway, the reason I brought it up is because the best part of it, the soundtrack, is out, and you should absolutely listen to it. It's on Spotify if you're young and hip, or you can just buy it if you're old like me. Uh, it's been split into two bits, with Volume 2 releasing next week, uh, and if you're in the mood for some writing accompaniment, I heartily recommend it. Right, that's all from me. I'm off to go measure my front door and see if the Steam Deck will fit. Bye.